days about um, about living in hatred and why sometimes we can't pursue what we what, that God wants for our life because we're so stuck in a bitterness. You know, I was once that person that even when I become born again, I was stuck in hate. So what I knew that what I knew that the Lord had planned for my life, I couldn't move forward to do. And that I, I knew what was destined, but I couldn't do or fulfill that because I was stuck in a bitter place. That at the same time, I wanted God in my life. I also wanted bad things to happen to people. And this is the enemy. This is the enemy at his best, working through people's lives. And I just want to tell you today, there's no truth in him. I rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ. And I cast out any enemy that wants to come on this platform tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that no weapon will come across against us today no brother or sister on this platform will have any infirmity when they've left this, left this platform because they'll be edified in the message of the cross amen today i want to go on a, a little teaching called um well it's about hatred saints you know and it says here in one john verse uh, chapter four verse 20 says if anyone says i love god and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God, whom he has not seen. You know, we have to, we cannot pursue to say that we love, love the Lord when we can't love a brother or we can't love a sister or we can't love another brother in Christ. And this is an important message today because, you know, we cannot let the Holy Spirit work and dwell in us when at that same time we're pursuing hatred against somebody else. So I just want to come on a message saying that we have to learn to love. We're called to love. We're not called to hate. We're not called to have any spirit against anybody. In the name of Jesus, we have to we have to do what the Lord wants us to do. And that's win the lost. But at the same time, we can't win lost souls, bring them into the kingdom of God and then hate another brother or wish something bad on somebody else. Amen. So there's another chapter I want to go on here. And it's um, one John. Uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 9 and it says here whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother he's still in the darkness yes amen this is also important because you know how can we sit there and say we've come to the light of the Lord how can we say that we know Jesus in an intimate way when we hate another brother you know and I was once this person so I know how it feels and I know what it's like to say that we're in Christ that we're in the body you know we are the bible says we're one body so we need to be so careful on how we pursue what god wants for our life because we cannot do anything for the lord while we're living in hate you know it's really important saints and in proverbs 10 verse 12 says hatred stirs up strife but love covers all off offense yeah offenses yes amen you know hatred stirs up strife you know, when we hate, we can, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation, saints, where you want to go out and you want to speak out and gossip about others in that time. And you want to go, oh, yeah, this one said that, or this one whispered that, or that one said this. This is strife. This is an unstable man that's double-minded that is willing to go and cause hate or disrupt, disrupt a, a, a meeting or whether it's a, um, a prayer meeting or even a, even a birthday party, you know, you know, because people are not happy until they start trouble now this is a spirit and this spirit comes from the devil he can see sometimes that we've give our life to christ that we want to go further in our journey but the enemy wants to stop us going that little bit further by having a hatred in our soul that that then that hatred then causes strife to other people we need to watch this because i know what it's about when i went to a church when i was first born again I had a lot of hate in me and because I didn't want to let the, the, the Lord manifest into my life at that particular time and moment and place, I would cause trouble. And it doesn't matter what church is wrong or what this one says or what that one does. There was no perfect church, saints. There's no perfect human being. We all fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall down many times and get us get, you know, get back up at that moment. But I want to say to you today that we need to pursue what God has for our life. But to do that is to remove any hate, any hate from our brother and sister. Because, no, you know, people come in our lives, people go out of our lives. Sometimes the Lord, shut, the Lord shuts a door and he opens a fresh door. 
you know, so many people have left my life since I gave my life to Jesus, since I knew what Christ wanted for me. You know, when you really come to know what Jesus wants for you, you're not going to be that man that's searching for a woman. You're not going to be that man that's searching for the things in the world. You're not going to be that man that hates people. You know, we could all go for our problems saying this one's done that and this one has done that. But when you become born again, you become a new creation in God. And that creation that you become, your old life has left. Yes, sometimes, you know, that's easier said than done. Sometimes we, we can fall short, we can go back, we can back, backslide. But we need to know if we want to pursue the journey of that God has for our lives today, we need to remove such things, you know, praise God, amen. And then in John, John 15, verse 8 says, if the world hates you, know that he has hated me before he hated you. Yes, hallelujah. See, Christ went through the towns of Galilee, Cape and I am. He went through all these places, in the, even in the temples, you know, he told the people that this city's become a harlot. So he was hated for preaching the gospel. Now, many say to me today that, you know, even when he was mocked, they decided to put, you know, on the cross at Calvary, the king of Jews. But they didn't want to call him a king because they thought he was a king. They put, they wanted to mock him to that cross by putting that message on his cross. King of the Jews. You know, let me tell you today, he, he suffered more persecution than any of us can witness today. I thought my life was, I thought I was being persecuted persecuted in the park yesterday i thought i was being persecuted last week the day before that but what really comes to mind is that christ took more persecution than any of us could possibly take in a lifetime this is why we need to carry on doing what we're doing and if we're going to say to each other oh i'm, I'm I, I you know i don't like this brother anymore or i give up with this one because he persecutes you what did jesus say love your neighbor for i love yourself because we need to treat people the way we want to be treated, saints, you know. We can't expect to do evil things to people and then sit there and call ourselves a righteous Christian or a man that knows God. Because I used to be that person and I can be a witness to that person and I know what it's like to sit there and say, you know, the father, when deep down in your heart, you've got full of bitterness. There's a bitterness in your heart. It's called a hardened heart. And only the Lord himself can manifest into your life and remove that heart and remove that stony heart and put a brand new heart of flesh. Because we could never be persecuted the way Christ got persecuted at the cross. We could never be ignored and ridiculed the way he did. We couldn't lavish the stripes that he had across his back and the pain he went through to forgive us for, to give us that life and in, in an abundant for us to remove our sins. We can rather carry on to be a worker of iniquity, hate the brother, speak, call strife, gossip, or we can choose to follow Christ and love. Call a love, you know, we need to love. Because I can witness today that so many people have come against me in my life that I used to once despise. And it's took me so many years to come to realize that who am I to judge? Who am I to judge anybody, you know? The other day I was preaching the, the gospel in the park to two to two uh two two women, you know, two gay women. And um and um sorry people uh, brothers, there's a party going on outside there, you know. Sorry. Um as I said, um someone's calling me out now. <laughs> they want me to pray for him, brother. Stay there one second. Hello, brother. I'm just on a meeting. Can I ring you back? I'm on a meeting, give me 10 minutes. What, what? You want prayer? Do you want prayer? Yeah, please, brother. Give me, give me fifteen minutes, my brother, and I'll be out to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on. Sorry, people. I apologize. I've got um next door. There's an African party going on there, and uh, my neighbours want prayer. You know. So this is what it's about to be a Christian. To reach to people, even if it's your neighbour, give them the time. Go out and preach the gospel to them. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Because in that moment, you know the Lord. Has planted something in me that I never used to have, and that's a love for people. It doesn't matter what they do to me anymore, it doesn't matter what they say about me. They can ridicule me, they can tell me I'm overweight, they can tell me I look ugly, they can tell me I've got one tooth. But you know what? I've got that a lot of people ain't got that's Jesus Christ. What saints that's Jesus Christ. I have my Lord and Savior. That every day, every day in my life, when I wake up, I pray to Him, I leave it with Him. 
Everything in my life, I leave with him. Whatever my day is going to be, wherever I go out, I, I pray before I tr before I go and evangelize. You know, today I prayed for a sister. She come out and she evangelized with me today. Praise God for her. You know, souls are one. All glory to God because he takes the glory and we take the message. Amen. We take the message. We cannot take the glory for nothing. And that's what I tell people. We take the message with us. Praise God. And it says here in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 44, it says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is very important. We have to continue to pray for those that come against us at this time. Because many will come against us. As soon as we give our life to Christ, like today, I was preaching the gospel. And a guy came over to me, said, he said to the sister that I was uh, uh, evangelizing with, oh, this guy, Ryan, you know, watch him, he said. He talks about King James. He talks about all this stuff in the Old Testament. And this is what the enemy does, saints. When we have a relationship with God, we are on a journey. And it's, a pro it's called a promised land. But when the enemy wants to start deceiving, it'll come through to people. And then, then people will persecute you. So I want to tell you today that those that persecute you, stand firm. Stand firm for Jesus. As he, stood, as he stood, stood, stood firm for you, you know. And I really give that message today. And it says here in Proverbs 26, chapter 26, verse 24 to 26. It says, whoever hates, discuses, discuses himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. You see, this is important. You see, as soon as, as, soon as we speak from our mouth, it, we can harbor deceit in our hearts. If, it's not, if we're not speaking in the right tone, because there's power in the tongue, as the Bible says, you know, and there's so much deceit in our heart as well. So we have to be so careful, so careful what we say about people. So careful. Because not only does it cause trouble and strife, but it causes conflict in the body of Christ. And people start to turn against one another. And I've seen it so many times. And it says here, when he speaks graciously, believe him not. For there are seven abom abominations in his heart. Through his hatred, he covered this deception. His wickedness will be exposed to the assembly. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like Judas. Jesus knew that Judas Iscariot, he knew that this man, was going to turn his back on him. So this is what I'm saying. Wickedness will be exposed to the assembly. We cannot think that we can go around being wicked to people. Even other, and I'm, and I'm speaking saints, I'm speaking about other Christians here, including myself, that when we go around thinking that we can do what we want and speak bad of people and call ourselves a Christian, one day we're going to be caught out for what we're doing. Our deeds will be seen. And, and, more, more, more likely than anything, our deeds are being seen in heaven. That's the thing. We cannot hide from God. I tried to hide from God all my life. And God has just thrown it in my face and said, Ryan, you need to get up. You need to pray. You need to, you need to worship me and the one I sent. Because I used to hide from God, thinking I could do everything on my own. Causing trouble, left, right and centre. Speaking out about people, about churches. But God changed my heart. Because I'm going to tell you something today, saints, and I'm going to tell you something that's coming from my heart and is truth to this word. You can go to many churches on your journey. You can go to 10 churches in, a, in, in what? In a space of a month. But take that offense with you. You can take that offense with you wherever you go. So this is what I mean. It's not, it's not the problem of the church sometimes. It's the problem with you. You have the problem. You're the one that cannot see that God's what God has for you. You're the one that can't see or surrender to him with the things he wants because you're living in, in a bitterness full of hate towards one another. And I believe in my heart today that after this, this meeting finishes, that we, the enemy will be removed from anyone's life today that has this spirit about them. And I, I do want to ask anyone on here. And if anyone can come forward to me now, something's touching my heart. If anyone on here saints that have, you have got that feeling in your heart now, please bring it to me now. Tell me. And I'll pray for you right now. Because I say this to people because a lot of people have that and yet they, they, they find it hard to come on here and, 
and, and talk about it. Well, I'm here to tell you now that I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to pray for you. If it's something you're struggling with, please, I'll give you a few seconds. Come on, tell me. If there's anyone on here and it has a heart full of hate and that's bitter, whether it's a family member, whether it's someone in your life right now that you are, that you are burdening your troubles because you can't get rid of that hatred, come and tell me and I'll pray for you now. Because it's in my heart to say to you all that not only do I love Christ, but I love you all. As you're my saints, you're my brothers and sisters. I've, I've been on this meeting for a while and I want to reach out to as many as I possibly can from my heart. Heartfelt. Because a hatred man defiles himself that a man that's in hate. And a man in hate cannot see the things of God. Because why, why he's living in that hate in his body, the Lord can't do anything for him. Those that know Christ should know that there's no hate in Jesus. He done nothing apart from love. Love was all he had. And I'm going to tell you something today, truly of my heart. That once we can start to remove it, it's a process. It's a, it's a transformation. It takes time. But this is why I'm offering you prayer today, because I really believe in my heart, my soul and my mind. That not only does the word of God surpass all understanding, but we can come to a place of knowing what God's got for our life in that moment when we remove this hate. So please, if anyone's on here now, come on and tell me, please. Excuse me, sir. Please. Hello. Hello. There. Is this only for hatred? Uh, I'm, I'm speaking about that topic today, sir. Yes. Okay. Bless you. It could be anything. Is there anything else? Please. Uh, just pray for that peace of mind. And, yeah. I'll pray for you, brother. <laughs> I will pray for you. Thank you. I'll pray for you. No, God bless you. And your name? Your name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Amen. Biblical name. Come on, praise God. Today, Father God, I just want to lift up the name of Emmanuel, Father. That you remove, you put a brand new heart in him, Father God, today. That anything that's overhanging on him today, Lord, that he can't find peace in his heart, you, re I re you remove it now in the name of Jesus. That I bind any spirit of hatred, bitterness, oppression, depression, witchcraft, anything, Lord, that you remove from him now, that you get him, you bring him to a place that he's never actually been before, Father, that he surrenders himself to you now and gives his life to you. And you show him and direct him for the purpose that he has for his life. And if there's any hatred in him, Lord, or any bitterness, I will decree it comes out now in the name of Jesus. Because you gave your son to us that would, we were hoping that we would not perish. That, that would ever believe in him would have that everlasting life. So I remove for Emmanuel today. I want to pick him up, Father God. Release him and bring him to a place that he's never been. And do not let him stumble in any time or any, any, any stone to stumble his block. But give him that peace and head him, edify him, Father. Bring him to a place of worship. So he worships you. So that it becomes to have that intimate relationship with you. Because I'm not here to speak about religion. But I'm here to talk about a personal relationship with God. So today, Father, I lift Emmanuel up to know that he's very loved, not only on this platform, but in your heart. That you, knew, you know him better than anybody else. As you created him in the image of yourself, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And there's one more chapter I'd like to go on here. And um, praise God, you know. The Lord's amazing. Um, it says, but I say to you, and this is from Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 36. But I say to you, hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you to one who strikes you on the cheek after the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withheld your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you and from one who takes away your goods. Do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. All glory to God. Because this, this, this is on my heart. If somebody comes to you today, saints, 
that says to you, I need to lend some money. Or I need to, I, and this person you really despise, or I'm, I'm having great difficulty in my life. Then you help that person. If your heart is moved to help that person, you help that person. Do not worry about, you know, oh, I've helped him. What do I do? Maybe I didn't do the right thing. If God has told you in that moment and space and time to do that, please go and do that. Don't ignore what the Lord tells you to do. Because we're not here on our own thinking anymore. Because when we give our life to Jesus, as I said, we become anew. And I really want to tell you all today that do not turn your back on people. Because you don't know what's going on in that person's life. You don't know if that person's got a spirit in them. You don't know if they're demon possessed. You don't know if they're oppressed. You don't know if they're homeless or financially distressed. Because I'm telling you now, it doesn't matter what we've got here. We can't take it with us. So I want to tell you all, do not turn your back. My message is not about money here. My message is about do not turn your back on someone that needs your help. Because you could be, you could feel very guilty after, you know. And that's why it says give to those who hate you. Because when we give to those that hate us, God sees that blessing. The Lord sees our deeds, saints. And our deeds will be much more, uh, uh, vom much more honourable in heaven than it's going to be here. Because so many today look for deeds here. Look for their brother to say, well done. Hallelujah. Yes, but the Lord can give you more. That your, your deed in heaven is, is going to be more better than here. That's why the Bible says, count your treasures in heaven, not on earth. Over to you, Brother Mandapi. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for giving me the time. I've, I've really enjoyed teaching today. And uh, yes, um, Brother Emmanuel, I've got, I've got you in my prayer. If you'd like to reach out to me, Brother, I'll leave you my number on the, on the, on the meeting later. And I can, I can pray with you as well. I've All got right. so much time for you, Brother. You know, God bless you, my Brother. Praise God for you. Amen. God bless you, Brother. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Um, I think linked to uh, what brother, brother Ryan is sharing. Let me just put this on. Yeah, linked to what Brother Ryan is sharing that's been on my heart is just the need to maintain unity in the, bro in the body of Christ. And that's only going to come through us loving one another. And I think the reason why Christianity is not as powerful as it should be, the reason why... Uh, we don't see Christians in position of influence, etc., is because there's a lack of unity amongst us. There's too much division, and division comes as a result of a lack of love. Because we shouldn't be backbiting one another, ha harboring malice towards one another, arguing with one another because there's difference in doctrine. But we should be striving to come under the name of Jesus Christ because. We were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember what Paul said. Paul said that, look, I don't say I don't see why some of you are saying I'm for Cephas. Some of you are saying I'm from Apollos. Some of you are saying I'm from Paul. In the church in Corinth, they were all divided under different leaders who may have had different doctrines. But Paul said that's foolish because none of you were baptized in my name or in Peter's name or in Apollos's name. You were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So. We need to stay, stay clear of those that cause division, stay clear of those that have hatred in their heart, particularly people that, uh, that are busybodies, uh, particularly people that spend a lot of time gossiping about other people. We need to stay clear from them because they're, they're being sent by the devil uh, to cause confusion. They've been sent by Indeed. the devil uh, to, to cause division. And we have to, be, we have to remember that, look, you know, the devil knows that a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, it's very important to be one. It's very important to be, uh, to, to, to have unity. That's why Jesus in John 17, he prayed that, that the church may be one, even as he's one with the father. That was his main prayer before he died. But the devil knows that if he can bring division in the church, then the church is not going to be powerful. So that's why the devil does he he's hardest to, to divide the church. The other religions like Islam, Islam is incredibly united. OK, Islam, they believe very strong in this sense of brotherhood. They believe very strong in the sense of unity. That's why you can be a Moroccan Muslim or, and meet up with a, a Mali, a, a Muslim from Mali. And you don't look at color. You don't look at, uh, at, at background. You just look at 
being one in Islam. Yeah. But you see in Christianity, the oh, devil yeah. have put tears into the church. Uh -huh. The Bible says that, uh, or Jesus told us that uh, he gave a parable and he said that a farmer went out to go and sow uh, some, some wheat one day and then an enemy came and put some tears and they grew up together and they looked exactly like the same. And when the farmer recognized that the tears had been sown, uh, the farmer wanted to go and remove, or one of the workers wanted to go and remove the tears from the wheat. But the farmer said, no, 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 just let them grow up together. And on the day of harvest, we'll burn, we'll remove the tears from the wheat and burn them up. And Jesus said, so shall it be in the coming of the son of man that basically he will let the tears stay in the church. Uh, the tears will look like the body of Christ. We, we, some of us may not know, but at the final day, Jesus who knows the hearts, Jesus who knows the deeds, Jesus who knows the things that are hidden, uh, Jesus that knows that our motivations will be able to separate the, the true church from the counterfeit church. But know that the reason why there's so much division in the body of Christ, because it can be frustrating for me, it's been one of the most frustrating things since I've been a Christian. It's frustrating that there's hundreds of millions of different doctrines and denominations. I find that frustrating. It's frustrating that uh, we can spend a lot of time arguing with each other about different things. But the reality is, is that the reason why there is this division is because it's the devil. The devil was at work trying to bring confusion in the body of Christ because the only way, you know, Paul said that the pillar of truth in the world, the foundation of truth is the church. And so the devil knows that if he can cause a division in the church, then it's not going to be as effective as it could be. Yeah, come on. The church, the church is in direct uh, contradiction, in, in direct conflict uh, with the kingdom of darkness. And uh, the moment you've been identified as a child of God, you become an enemy of the kingdom of darkness. Yep. So don't, don't, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Don't be bitter, you know, as Brother Ryan was saying, don't have heart hatred against anybody because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So your enemy, your enemy is not really the individual. And that, that is what Jesus was saying. He said, you know, in the past, you've heard it, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But he's saying now in this new covenant, don't, don't walk in that way. Don't walk in violence. Don't walk in revenge because at the end of the day, we're not wrestling against human beings. We're, re we're wrestling against forces. We're wrestling against spirits. We're wrestling against angels. Like yep. we're wrestling against, against Satan and his angels. So focus more on, on forgiveness. Remember the Bible says that if we don't forgive those who have harmed us, then God will not forgive us. So more often than not, the devil if we're living a good life, the devil wants to bring people into our lives to hurt us yeah. so that we can harbor bitterness against them. And so therefore we can't really move forward because God said he cannot forgive us unless we forgive others. Come on now. There are people that I know that have had, had an unforgiveness for more than 10 years and they still come to Bible meetings. But you can hear when they talk to you, when they're talking about somebody, you can tell that they're still bitter. You can tell that they're still unforgiving because if you have an issue with somebody you don't really bring them up you don't really speak badly of them so you know the bible says out of the abundance of the mouth the heart uh, is it the, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so you can really discern someone's oh. state of mind on the basis of uh, yeah. what they say and it is it is shocking to know that there are people like that that do really walk in unforgiveness but it's an attack of the enemy you know de de devils can use people satan can use people as Ryan suggested, Judas was used by Satan. The Bible says Satan entered into Judas. It wasn't really Judas. It was Satan that was doing the work. I was doing the bidding in Judas. So don't harbor hatred towards people. The Bible says don't let the sun go down, you know, on your anger. At the earliest opportunity, look for peace. The Bible says follow holiness, be holy and follow peace with all men without which no man can see the Lord. If you don't have peace towards everybody, then you, you never see, you'll never see the Lord. If you have enemies, secret enemies in your heart, you will not see the Lord. You have to, you have to get to a stage where you're kind of just, you just don't really care, you know, what people say. You don't really care what people think. Like you have to be really stoic. You have to be really like indifferent to what people are saying. And you have to be more sensitive to what God is saying. Like you're, 
your focus needs to be more on what what is God's opinion of me, not so much what is man's opinion on me. Because yes. Jesus really said that to the Pharisees, Jesus said to the Pharisees that you guys are seeking honor from men. But if you seek honor from, from men, that's an abomination. And Jesus said that the Pharisees go out there and they they pray out loud and, you know, uh, they want it, they want all the attention so that they can get praise from men. And mm -hmm. Jesus said that, look, you have your reward. <laughs> your reward has already been given to you. But he said, when mm -hmm. you pray, go in secret. When you evangelize, do it in secret. When mm -hmm. you fast, do it in secret. When you do good mm -hmm. deeds, do it mm -hmm. in secret so that your father who shall see you in secret will mm -hmm. reward you openly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So be in a place of insensitivity. Like, don't really care what people say. Remember when, when they were crucifying Jesus or before they crucified Jesus, many false witnesses were set up against him. They were lying about him, saying that he did yeah. this, he, he said that. He didn't do any of that. But he didn't mm -hmm. respond. He didn't open up his mouth. He didn't defend. He didn't really care, to be honest, because he understood that it was the will of God for him to go in that way. So we need to understand that, look, the first thing we need to do is to be blameless before the Lord. If there's any sin, anything that that is uh, that our conscience is telling us is wrong, because we, we have the Holy Spirit and our conscience bears witness uh, or, you know, with uh, or the Holy Spirit bears witness with our conscience, the things that we do are wrong. So if we know anything is wrong, let's ask God for the strength to overcome that sin or that stuff and block. And then anything that happens, once you're living blameless, understand that when you live blameless before God, your, your steps are literally being ordered by the Lord. Because the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So when you're living blameless and righteous, the things that you think, the things that you decide, the things that you do, the places you go, the people that you meet, don't think that it's by chance. It's actually God that's actually orchestrating all of your steps and engineering and, and directing your life. So if in the process of that, God is directing your life, you, you happen to encounter people who are wicked, don't be surprised. Don't, don't be shocked. Don't feel, oh, wow, like I'm doing so good. I'm, I'm living so righteously. How could this brother reward me evil for my good? It's part of being a Christian. <laughs> It's, it's not only part of being a Christian, it's also a massive reality check because, yes, the world is full of wicked people. Let, lest we didn't know, the world is full of wicked people. It's, it's literally full of wicked people. So that's why Jesus wasn't shocked when Judas betrayed him. That's why Jesus wasn't shocked when people crucified him. He wasn't like screaming like, God, like, why would this happen to me? I'm so great. Like, I, I haven't done anything wrong. He wasn't doing any of that. He understood the world that he lived in. When, when, um, uh, when uh, he was speaking to Pontius Pilate, Christ said that my kingdom is not of this world. If it was of this world, then my men would fight for me. This kingdom, this world that we live in does not belong to God currently. No. Does he own it? Yes, of course he owns it. He owns everything. But the, is, is he an authority over this world? To some degree, no. To some extent, no. That's why you see crazy women in the United States of America crying out for abortion rights. Yes. Okay, why? Because God has not given his mandate on the earth. God has, not, God has not sent his wrath on the earth yet. God has not sent Christ onto the earth yet to take possession of the earth. Why did Satan come up to Jesus and said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world because Satan has authority over this world at this stage. So when people are manifesting Satan, when people are, are lying, when people are murdering, when people are deceiving, we should not be shocked. They're just manifesting the nature, the spirit of their father, who is the devil. But we as, as Christians have been called to manifest the nature of God. That's why Jesus in Matthew 5 said, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, that he lets his son shine upon the righteous and on the un and on the unrighteous. So we have to be in, we have to be, uh, we cannot discriminate between people who are good and bad. We have to be good to all people. We have to be kind to all people, even to people that don't deserve it. Because those people that, that, that even they don't, that they don't deserve it, how are they going to see Christ unless we show them Christ? Yes. Yes. We're not called to show them Elijah. We're not called to show them Moses. If we're called to show them Elijah, then we're going to get offended and bitter. Yeah. If we're called to show them Elijah, we're going to cry out and say, God, consume them with fire. Lord, you know, let, let them die. Let them perish. You, you know, people still pray like that. 
if some people still pray that way, they're like, let them perish by fire, let them perish by fire. Like, they're, they're, like <laughs> that's not how we've been called to pray. Come on. Jesus Christ said that we're not of, the, of that same spirit. Okay, remember the man of transfiguration, Peter, James, John, they saw Elijah, they saw Moses. They were marveling. Wow, we've seen the great prophets of the Old Testament. And then God, God was so, you know, God was like, I need to intervene because they don't really understand this. And he came down in a cloud and he said, this is my son, hear him. Okay. In, in other words, look at Christ. Christ gives us a, a superior way. Christ is better than Moses. Christ is better than Elijah. You may have learned some things from those prophets, but if you really want to learn about my ways, the father's ways, you need to look at the son. And Jesus Christ has told us to forgive those who do evil to us, to bless, to bless those who curse us, etc. Now, I've spoken quite a lot on that because it was really good, um, Brother Ryan. Um, but that's not what I wanted to share. But I've got about 10 minutes, so I'll just quickly... I don't know if anybody else wanted to just share anything um, in conjunction to what uh, Brother Ryan uh, shared earlier on about hatred. Uh, does anyone have anything or any prayer points or anything they wanted to share? Amen. Okay, if, if not... Um, We'll just look at a few scriptures. We've got about five minutes uh, before we close. We'll just look at a few scriptures. And what I've been sensing in the last few days was about being weak and how God actually would prefer us to be weak than to be strong. And um, what I mean by that is that we can live this Christian life relying upon our own strength. And that's actually quite proud to God. It's kind of proud. Uh, we cannot be self-righteous we cannot think that by our own uh, good works by our own strength that god is going to be pleased but what yeah. god the, the type of heart that god prefers is the one that is humble is the one that is reliant upon him is the one that depends upon him now from my experience with god 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 does get grieved if you do bad things but if we take it to him and we ask him for the strength to overcome whatever thing we may be battling with, God will definitely give us the strength. But if we feel like, oh, I'm going to overcome this thing by my own strength, then it's going to be very difficult to gain the assistance you need from the Holy Spirit to actually overcome that issue and to actually become perfected in your walk. So I want us to cultivate this heart of being weak this this heart of being reliant upon god this heart of recognizing that look we're just dust we're not really anything in in the, you know in in the sight of god and that's just the truth it's not false humility it's not rhetoric it's the truth we are really we're, we're like dust i know we are we are the sons of god we are the children of god i acknowledge that but even so we receive that not through our strength we receive that because of jesus because of what Jesus has done, because of the new covenant, because Jesus Christ has come and lived on the inside of our hearts, we can now be adopted into the family of God. So that's not anything that we've done. All we did is get baptized in the name of Jesus. All we did is, is repent. And re remember, repentance doesn't just mean confessing your sin. <laughs> repentance means changing your mind, changing your mind that sin is wrong, changing your mind that you are a good person, changing your mind that you can do as you will and there's no repercussions for it. Acknowledging that heaven and hell are realities. Acknowledging that the only way to the Father is through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what repentance is about. It's not Repentance is, is different to confession. Okay, confession is when you say you're, you're confessing your sin. You're saying sorry for your sin. They're, they're linked, but they're different. Okay, so um, there's just a few scriptures we'll just quickly look at, then we're going to close. So second... In fact, I can put it up on this. Second Corinthians. Um, Second Corinthians chapter, I think I spelled that wrong. Chapter 12. Praise God. So Second Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read from verses, verses 5. It says, 
And this is Paul speaking. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, or, or that he heareth of me. Okay, so Paul wanted to almost brag, almost boast of some of the things that God had shown him. But he, he understood that if I share some of the things that, that, that God has shown me, some of you will think of me greater than I actually am. Because Paul understood that he was nothing. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a fawn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Okay, so what Paul is saying here is that in his heart, he might have, he, he knew that because he had so much revelation from God, it could have resulted in him being quite proud. So in order to keep him humble, something bad began to happen in his life. And it says a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. Buffet means to harass. So a messenger, a messenger is, is an angel, okay? So what is the exact nature of, of this messenger of Satan? We don't know, but I believe it's probably a fallen angel. It's probably an unclean, a unclean angel. And it was buffeted him. It was harassing him. Because you notice in the book of Acts that in the life of Paul, he went through a, a great deal of, of persecution. He was stoned. If you read the, the previous chapter, it, it talks about, we can just quickly read it. I think the Holy Spirit's here. So let's just appreciate him second Corinthians chapter 11 we can just quickly read some of the things that he went through in his ministry he says of the Jews five times I was I was uh, whipped 39 times three times I was beaten with metal rods once I was stoned three times I suffered a shipwreck a night and a day I have been in the deep can you imagine that being in in water for a day and, and a, a night and a day. I think that's what he's saying here, that he was maybe swimming for a day and a night because of a shipwreck. Imagine that. In journeyings often, in perils of water. Remember, all of this wasn't happening because uh, Paul was setting up a business. This was all happening because Paul was preaching the gospel. All of these things happened as he was preaching the gospel. In journey, And these are, these are the places that God would often direct him to. So he was suffering and doing the will of God. When you do the will of God, you have to suffer. The will of God is for you yeah. to suffer. The will, of, the will of God results in you suffering. Remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, he said, this cup is too much for me to take. But nevertheless, not as I will, as you will. And what was the will of the Father? The will of, of the Father was for him to drink of that cup. And that cup was the cross. That, that was the will of the Father. So don't listen to these preachers that tell you that the will of the Father is for you to, uh, you know, to get a Rolls Royce and etc. Hey, come on, look. Second John does say that it's the will of the Father for your soul to prosper. So I'm not against prosperity. I'm for prosperity, but I'm not going to try and make it a doctrine and say that everybody has to prosper. That's the will of God. The will of God is for you to be conformed to Christ. The will Amen. of God, as it says in First Thessalonians chapter four. Yeah. is your sanctification that is the will of god amen Mom. so in journeys often in perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils of the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils amongst false brethren in weariness in painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness these are the things that, that, that Paul encountered regularly, amen? And he kept the faith until the end, amen? So ver, going to verse eight, he said, for this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And God said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, amen? Most gladly, therefore, will I glory most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine affirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, the power of Christ can only rest upon you when you're weak. When you're weak. That's why fasting is a great 
way to have the power of Christ rest upon you because when you fast, you're humbling yourself. When you're fasting, you're weak. When you're praying, you're weak. When you let, now that's why Jesus said, if somebody slaps you on one side of the face, turn the other, the other cheek, let him slap you there as well. Because what's that? Weakness. God doesn't want us to defend ourselves. God, do, You see, there's so many people, they get offended and they're trying to seek vengeance. The Bible says vengeance belongs to the Lord. We're just called to live a righteous life. A yeah, come on. Life, come on now. A Hallelujah. quiet life. Paul said that live your life quietly. Don't try and make a name for yourself. Just live righteously. Yeah. That is how the power of Christ may rest upon you. And look, if the power of Christ doesn't rest upon you, then it's quite difficult to live a Christian life. Okay? So we need to be weak. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. So Amen. Paul came to this realization, of, albeit admittedly at, towards the end of his ministry, that it is good to be persecuted. It is good to be hungry. It is good to be thirsty. It is good to be weak. Because when I am weak, that is when the power of God comes strong upon me. Do you think that, oh, you know, David was this magnificent man. That's why the power of God, the anointing used to come upon him. No, it's because David was weak. That's why when, when uh, Samuel went, uh, the prophet Samuel went to, to, uh, to, to Bethlehem, uh, to Jesse's house, the father of David, and God told Samuel, one of these sons, I'm going to anoint to be the king. Samuel was looking at all the strong men. Samuel was looking at all the big men, the tall men. He, he, got, he looked at the tallest one. He said, oh, surely the Lord's anointed. And God said, I don't look according to outward appearance. I look according to the inner man. And there was David, the smallest, the feeblest, the weakest, the one that was out in the wilderness looking after the sheep. And God said, that's my anointed. That's the one I've chosen. That's the one I've chosen. Look at, he stood before Goliath, but he was weak. All of the other men had their armor. All of the other men had, men had their, their swords, their shields, their spears. And David came with a little sling. Uh, with a little sling. Was it? I can't remember what it's called, but it's a little sling and a stone, five stones. See, he, when he was weak, he was made strong. And this, this is what David says regarding the matter. We'll close there because of time. Uh, but Psalm said. 51, verses 17, this is what David said regarding this matter. Psalm 51, verses 17. The sacrifices of, of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to close there because of time, but yeah, I really had a fantastic meeting. Um, does anybody have any closing remarks, anything they would like to share? Amen. Amen. No, just, Go on, brother. Sorry, brother. Yeah, I was just what you were saying today, you know, about about you know hating people as well. We can't we can't take pleasure in hating. You know, some people say to me that you know they believe in Christ. I've heard people say, but I believe in karma. I say, no, this is a witchcraft spirit. This is a spirit of divination, you know. Um, wishing wishing someone to come to harm and calling yourself a man of God, you need to be very careful. You know, and what you said, another point you said earlier. You know, about, brother, there's this, there's a scripture, actually. I, I think it's, it's either Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. And it says that if, like, it says, it basically goes along the lines of saying that don't rejoice when somebody's brought down low, because if you rejoice, God is going to stop punishing them. And what it basically means is that when God sees that you are happy by somebody's downfall, God then has mercy upon that person and then he stops yes. punishing that person. Yes, exactly, yeah. So if yeah. you actually want somebody to go through justice, don't That's rejoice. Good. Don't rejoice. You have to, the Bible says pray for them. People yeah. that come against you, remember Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. It's, easy, it's easier said than done, yeah. but 
one thing I know as a Christian, if you're walking as a true Christian, you've got the Holy Spirit upon you, the angels of God are around you protecting you, then you, you definitely will be tested. There will definitely be somebody close to you. There has to be somebody close to you for you to be able to experience it. There can't be somebody, you know, somebody that's far off that you don't, you're not particularly close to. It has to be somebody close to you. And, and that's just a reality. And I can go through scriptures to show that. Abel, who, who betrayed Abel? It was his brother, Cain. Okay. Who, who betrayed uh, David? It, it was Ahetophel, who was his, one of his number one counselors. Ahetophel betrayed David. Not only Ahetophel, uh, David's son. Uh, what was his, what's David's son called again? The one that betrayed him. Someone will know it. You start Absalom. Absalom. Absalom, yes. Yeah, Absalom. Absalom, yes. Absalom betrayed his own son, betrayed him and, and yeah. created a civil war and tried to kill his own father. Moses, Miriam, and Aaron, his, his siblings, they were speaking evil against him because he took an Ethiopian wife. Look, it's always going to be people. There's always, if you, if you have this calling of God upon your life, you'll be surprised. Somebody close to you will end yes. betraying yeah. you. Yes. And God yes. will let it happen just to yeah. see how you respond are you going to respond in love? Yeah. are you going to respond yeah. in bitterness are you going to respond in anger of course as ryan has, has said as well judas happened with christ and if you read second um sorry i know we're gonna we said we're gonna finish but let's no, just I'd, love to fin I'd love to finish off the thing if you don't mind brother yeah sure let me just quickly just get this this scripture up quickly and then i just wanted to show you paul as well like towards the end of his ministry um, similar sort of things had happened. If you read some of Paul's earlier letters, he's talking really well about this guy called Demas. He's one of his disciples. Second Timothy 4 verses 10, or read from verses 9. Do thy diligence to come unto me shortly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present yes. world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescent to Galatia, <laughs> Titus to Galatia. Only Luke is with me. Yes. Okay, let's now go to verses uh, 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of, of whom be thou aware, you know, of whom beware also, for he has greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Look at Paul. He's saying, I've, I've labored so diligently to, to, to edify, to, you know, to help all of these people, and they all forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. So he has that spirit of Christ where he's not saying, God, you know, avenge me. He's saying, God, have mercy upon them. And this is the, this is the key bit, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of a lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. Amen. So yeah. people will betray you. Look at look at Job. Job is another good example. Job, yeah, wife, what a guy. You know, Job's wife was was telling him, "Go and curse God and die." You know, she wasn't encouraging him. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the people God. around you. Sometimes you have the greatest expect expectations of the people around you, but our expectation and our hope should be on the Lord. Yeah. It should be on the Lord. Go, go on, brother. Yeah, someone told me about Job once, you know. They said to me, I oh, wouldn't want to be like Job. Look what he had to go for. He lost everything. But you know what? Sometimes it just goes to show you that our faith is stronger than, our, than, the, than the things in the world that we believe in to be. You know, it's by our faith. And I just want to say something to, to you lot today that, that, you know, and I'll share it with you, you know. But, you know, my brother got sent down for murder two years ago, you know. Wow. And he's doing a long stretch, 25 years and I can't even get a prison visit, you know. And a brother in Christ, I won't say any names, but a brother in Christ come to me one day and said to me, you know, he said to me, and I think the enemy was working through him at this moment. He said, the reason your brother's in prison for life is because you weren't right with God. Look at that, to throw that in my face, you know. Paul, and you know what, brother? I could have turned, I could have, I could have lost my faith in that moment, sat down, turned my back on God, and gone back like a charlatan into the world. But at that mm. moment, I knew that I'd rather come weak from that or shall I become stronger? And I knew that I wasn't going to listen to this person because the enemy was directly working through him. And mm. that is what happens in our life. 
And that is when people can betray you. I still talk to that you, brother. You know, I, remember, look, we have to be in the spirit to discern. Remember, yeah. and this is one of my favorite stories in the New Testament. It's uh, the time when uh, Jesus gathered up all of the disciples and he said, who do men say that I am? And uh, Peter said that you're the son of God. And then God, and Jesus said to him that, blessed art thou, Simon, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. But then immediately after that, Jesus tells them that he has to go to Jerusalem and he's going to be betrayed and crucified. And then Peter starts rebuking him and say, no, no, you're not going to do that. We're not going to let that happen. And Jesus looks straight up at Peter and says, he says, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, because you, you, you do not savor the things of God. You savor the things of men. So one moment, God is inspiring him. The Holy Spirit is inspiring him. The, the, a few minutes later, the devil's now inspiring him. So when people do things, they say things, they do things. We have to put our spiritual glasses on and we need to say, okay, is this the spirit of God operating through this person? Or is this the devil operating through this person? And sometimes you can look at a man of God, a woman of God, think of them really highly, but you still need to really understand that even though they are a child of God, they can still, they can still be manifesting an unclean spirit. They can, an, an evil spirit can whisper something to them and they may believe it. A spirit can put something in their heart and they may act upon it. So we have to really understand that you can't really be getting too offended by what people say or do. It's just we have to look at it from a spiritual perspective and understand that, look, we live in a spiritual world and there's spiritual forces out there that use people and influence people to do things that are ungodly. Once we have this recognition, then it's so much easier to forgive people. That's why Jesus said, forgive them, they know not what they do. He did. It wasn't their fault. Those people that were screaming, crucify him, crucify him, they were being possessed. Like it was yeah, the, yeah. the spirit of hatred, the spirit of antichrist was all upon them. You know, when if other we preach the gospel to other people, they're not receiving it, they're getting angry. Why get offended? Just be gentle, be peaceable, and just move on. Take yeah, the, wipe the dust off your feet and move on. Don't get into your feelings, don't get proud, don't get angry. Just, just yeah. be an yeah, ambassador of Christ. Like an ambassador of Christ is a calm person. Ambassador of Christ. Yeah. Not somebody that gets easily angered. No, we have to, we have to, we have yeah, to take yes. it on Sometimes the, it's take pride. It on the, it's pr the reason why we argue sometimes is because it's pride. I know that has happened to me. Sometimes we want to defend our position. It's, it's pride. The Bible says, yeah. uh, Proverbs 13, verses 10, that only by pride comes contention. Yes. Sister, Sister Raylene, thank you for sharing that scripture. I'm going to put up quickly because that's the one that, I was quoting, but we'll read it quickly. Verses, seven, verses 17 to 18. It says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it, and it please him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Okay, so God's yes. not happy when we're, we're rejoicing when people are doing... <laughs> you know, that's why David, David, a man after, after God's own heart, Look what happened. Let's quickly get the scripture. Let's see how David responded. I think it's first Samuel. No, it's probably second Samuel. Let's just go second Samuel quickly. I don't know it exactly, but let's check. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter one, verses one. Let's just quickly read it. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul. When, now remember Saul was David's enemy. Saul was trying to kill David. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites and David had abode in two days in Ziklag, it came even to pass on the third day that behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with, with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when it, he came to David, he fell to the earth and bowed down. And David said unto him, from whence comest thou? And he said unto him, out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, how went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, that the people are fled from the battle and many of the people also are fallen and dead and Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. And David said unto the young man that told him, how do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? And the young man told him, as I happened by chance upon Mount Gelbio, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me and I answered him, here I am. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I said, I'm an Amalekite. 
He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee upon me. So this Amalekite is lying. He's, he's a liar. He's saying that, that what happened is that Saul was about to die. And that Saul told him to, to basically just kill him so that he's, you know, he doesn't fall into the hand of his enemy. But he's lying. That didn't really happen. He, he, he's lying because he thinks that David is going to reward him because he knows that Saul was David's enemy. He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee upon me and slay me for anguish has come upon me because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him. This is the Amalekite, the messenger speaking and slew him because I was sure that he could not live after that he has, he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm. And I brought them hither unto my Lord. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them. And likewise, all the men that were with him, and look how David respond, responds, and they mourned, and they wept, and they fasted until evening for Saul, and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen. You see, I see Christians today that rejoice when people are, are dead. You know, there was this man earlier on this year, uh, Ke Kevin Samuels, and Kevin Samuels spoke a lot about about women okay so when he died he had a heart attack Kevin Samuel ha had a massive following over a million subscribers when he died there were many women that were mocking him many women oh. they were rejoicing they were saying oh you know look what look at look at this hypocrite now he's dead they were literally rejoicing and I, it mm -hmm. makes me feel like these people are so far from God because look how David responded Saul want, tried many times to kill David now Saul is dead look how he responds he fasts for him he prays mm. he cries Verse 13, and David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? You see, even though Saul was living wickedly, he was still the Lord's anointed. This is why yes. I, don't, I don't speak yes. against political leaders. I honestly don't. I don't yeah. speak evil of them because I don't get, I don't get, I don't see any of the prophets in the Old Testament speaking evil. Of, yeah. of kings of queens and they actually yes. feared them look at elijah elijah ran from jezebel okay because a lot of these people that are in positions of influence and power they're actually anointed by god they may be wicked they may be far from the instructions of christ but they are the lord's anointed and we need to fear people in authority okay and mm -hmm. david was so this is this is like david is so shocked he's like these people don't understand god's ways he's like were well, you not afraid to do this against the lord's anointed <laughs> And the David, man was very foolish. That's what I just believe about that man. He's a very uh, foolish man. Is yeah, exactly. Very foolish. Very. <laughs> and and David called one of the young men and said, yeah, Go there yeah. and fall upon him and yeah. smote him that he died. So they killed that guy. And yeah. obviously, we don't do that. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon your own head. Yes. For the has testified against you, saying, I have it. slain the Lord's anointed. <laughs> Hmm. Wow. wow so he obviously he sang this song um you know the rest of the chapters at uh, this song that david wrote about saul and jonathan so so david this is why david is a man after god's own heart he's somebody that is like christ he is like christ he had the spirit of christ in him he forgave people he was loving towards people etc amen we're going to close there uh, because of time mm. and I've, I've kept us for, for 20 minutes longer but father we just mm. want to thank you lord for uh, today's meeting thank you lord for bringing us yeah. all. thank you lord for the uh, word brother ryan gave yeah. earlier on i thank you, lord for everybody that uh, managed to make this meeting i pray lord that you give us this, the spirit to love one another yeah. to have grace towards one another to forgive people yeah. i pray lord that you work in us and i pray lord god that you will strengthen every single one of us yeah. I pray, Almighty God, that you would favor every one of us. I pray, Lord, that you would lead us to your perfect will. And I pray you perfect that which concerns us. All those that weren't able to make today, I pray, Lord, that your hand and your blessing be upon them. I pray, Lord God, that we will not be tempted by the things of the flesh. But I pray, Lord God, that we will be devoted to the things of the Spirit. And I pray, Lord God, that you would use every single one of us uh, to bring glory to your name and to, to bring Christ onto this God. earth lord in jesus name God. praise god amen yes, that was that was a uh, edifying brother uh, as 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 always and it was a pleasure to come on it was a pleasure again for you to give me that time to teach 
Um, and I, I really take in what you said today. And I, I tell so many this and some get offended, but we don't have to show our good deeds to the whole world what we do is to Christ, you know. And that's so important because, you know, it's seen in heaven, you know. And, and that is the main thing, you know, because so many do it to be seen because that void that's in their heart that they thought had gone is still lying there somewhere, you know. Mm. And it's, I'm not here to judge, but, you know, some people like to, like, I mean, I was put on a Kiwi group and, yeah, I mean, it's a great group, but, and I, I, sometimes I put the names up who are, who, are, who, are, who are come, but you know what, in the last week, brother, I felt the Lord say to me sometimes, Ryan, this is not for you to do. Does that make sense, brother? Yeah. You know? You know, because it's got, yeah. sometimes it's personal between me and God. Do you understand? Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people say, why, Ryan? Share, share. But sometimes the Lord places in my heart that some things are for the Lord sees my work. I don't yeah. need any man to approve what I do, you know? Amen. Amen. That's a good place to be. Amen. Amen to you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good, it's good to see everybody. Um, Brother Wale, Sister Gladys, Brother Stefford. Yeah. Sister Jasmine, Emmanuel, Daniel, Fumilayo, and Ryan. So we're going to close there. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone, at, yeah, God bless you, everyone. Thank you. And I hope God bless you all you. and uh, love you all. And uh, I want to say, you, Brother Emmanuel, if you want to reach out to me, mm -hmm. brother, please, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll tap my number in for you and you can, you can, uh, I can pray with you. I can, um, you know, get you edified. And, you know, even one day you would like to come out and, you know, um, you know, with me and brother, my daddy, you know, we're going to go out and, you know, um, we're, we're going to, we're going to win the loss and, you know, you're more than welcome to come with us, you know. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you too. Hi, God bless. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Love you all. Good night. God bless.